Hey! So, this is not an ordinary everything video. Uh, usually I'm making science videos where I'm mixing short film with science, but in those videos I end up using a lot of visual effects and motion graphics. And some of you have asked whether I'd ever make some tutorials on how I do those things. So, being that the YouTube algorithm hates me, I figured maybe it was a good idea to make some more content and it made sense to make content about my content, which, you know, win-win. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you in After Effects how I made that wormhole in my time travel video. And if you haven't seen that video, then check it out. It'll be up here somewhere. Um, I highly recommend watching the whole thing, but if you can't, then just watch from two minutes 26 and you can just see that wormhole sequence that we're gonna be talking about. So anyway, better get on with it. Roll VT. I can't believe I just said that. Hey, so we're now in After Effects. Uh, here are a bunch of these shots from that wormhole sequence. Um, but I think we're just gonna work on one today. Uh, and I was thinking maybe this one, cause it's got, uh, it's quite a cool action shot and it's got the camera motion as well. So it means that we're gonna get to do some 3D camera tracking too. Okay, so just gonna jump straight in and copy my footage from this one. Um, and we're gonna make a new comp. We're gonna make 25 frames a second and we're just gonna call it wormhole shot. And we're gonna paste our footage into there. And then uh, command alt B which brings in your in and out points to just your selected footage and then trim comp to work area. And there we go, just, just got our footage there. Um, there's already a 3D camera tracker on, I'm just gonna remove that. So yeah, so first off, um, I mean we could just make the wormhole, but um, I prefer to actually track the shot first because then you've got the, um, you, you, whatever you stick into the shot, you can start to see how it's gonna look in the end. So uh, let's do that, we'll stick a camera tracker on. Oh, by the way, this is a really, really cool time-saving plugin thing. Um, it's from Video Copilot, um, Andrew Kramer's company, you might have heard of him, um, but he makes awesome plugins and tutorials Tutorials, but this one is a free one that they give away and it is called effects console and it basically means that you can search any effect um, within After Effects so rather than going up to your effect thing or you, you've got your effects thing here um, you can just hit control space bar and it brings it up so anyway that's really cool um, so we're gonna we need a tracker uh, and that's gonna analyze through Okay, so it's finished tracking the shot. Um, we've got all these tracking points here and we are gonna select one over here because this is where we want our wormhole to go. So I'm gonna create a solid and camera and that's gonna do two in one. And let's just scale this up. Continuous rasterize just so we get our sharp edges. Doesn't really matter for this, it's just a reference just to see uh, roughly where we want our wormhole to be and then just preview it. Cool, that's looking fine, all tracked in nicely. So let's just turn that off a second. Um, and we are gonna make our wormhole. So let's do a new composition. Uh, I'm gonna make it 2000 by 2000, uh, just so we've got it big enough in case we do any close-ups. I mean, we're not for this tutorial, but you know, if you're building stuff for sequences, I tend to try and build them a bit bigger, just so you know you've got that detail if you decide somewhere along the line that you just want to punch in on that shot. Um, okay, so we're going to call this wormhole. And we're going to start off by making a um, solid. We're going to stick a fractal noise using that uh, effects console again. I set it to strings, but I'm sure you could get a great effect with any of these different settings. Um, we, at the moment, are static, so we want them to move. So I'm going to put a, I'm going to alt click on the evolution uh, stopwatch and then I'm going to put a, a, an expression in here time times I think around maybe let's just say let's say 150 and then just bring in our uh, bring in our out point there just to see just to preview the speed um, yeah that's 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 fine let's leave it at 150 for now we can always change that later next we want to make that into a circle so let's put on 
something called polar coordinates. And what this does um, is when you crank up this value is it warps it into, I don't know what the math is behind the maths, God, American. Uh, I don't know what the maths is going on, you know, to, to, to create this uh, effect. But anyway, what we wanna do is change it to rect to polar and that will turn it into, as we can see, just start from 0% and it warps it into this circle, uh, which is perfect for a wormhole. It, it should be called wormhole coordinates. Um, so there we go, we've got a bit of evolution, we've got a circle, um, but also I want this to rotate. So I'm just gonna, first of all, I'm just gonna change my frame to start at zero because uh, it really annoys me when it's, it doesn't start at zero. Uh, I'm gonna go a little bit further out and then we're gonna go back to frame zero and I'm going to bring down the transform uh, options in the fractal noise and then we're going to uh, click on the stopwatch on the offset turbulence. We're going to move along to 100 frames um, and I'm going to change this to let's see 1500. Actually I think I want it, let's just see which way is that rotating. Uh, okay it's rotating that I think I want it to rotate the other way. I don't, um, I, I don't know why. I just, let's, let's just go 500. Okay, then we've got it rotating that way. Cool. Um, and now to make it look kind of swirly and wormholey, we're gonna add a twirl effect. Now watch this. We twist it and it spins. And this is where, this is really kind of where our main look of this part of the wormhole comes into play. So I've, I've made it a bit bigger to fill the whole um, whole lot of fractal noise, uh, but it's it's too kind of white, there's too much white going on. I wanna thin up those lines. So I'm gonna increase the contrast and maybe just lower the brightness a bit. Maybe the contrast a bit more. And there we go, we're starting to get something a bit more sort of refined. And I might just scale this up Bit. Let's go 150, maybe 140. Yeah, that's not looking too bad. Although I don't like this bit in the middle, so I'm going to duplicate that twirl and I'm going to scale it down. And you can see, you can see we're just twirling just that middle bit now. I'm going to reduce it a little bit. And now we sort of just turn that on and off just to show you. Oh, there we go. And now we're sort of getting something a bit more swirly all the way down to the middle bit, the singularity, uh, maybe. I don't know, there's more kind of black holes. Anyway, watch the film, you'll understand. Um, so that's that, now we wanna add some color. So I'm gonna use another uh, Video Copilot plugin and it's called VC, so that VC just stands for Video Copilot, uh, Color Vibrance. So there we go, let's stick that on. And it, it, it just, it's a nice quick plugin um, to add color and um, uh, sort of messes around with the highlights and, and it, it just looks nice, it looks nice. What more do you want from me? Uh, there we go, let's do something like that. And then we're gonna stick a glow on because in sci-fi, everything has glows on. Glow, glow, why aren't you glowing, God damn you. There we are. Um, I like to use, um, you can use the inbuilt glow in After Effects. I don't really like it, I have to say. Um, I use something from a company called Frischluft. Um, I don't know what Frischluft means. Probably means something like cool plugin or something. Um, but it's a glow effect and there's it comes with a pack of different stuff and it's very cool and yeah, you have to pay for it, but it's it's not like mega bucks and it's, it's, it's really nice, worth, worth investing in it if you do a lot of After Effects, definitely. Um, so there we go. I think that's that's kind of nice. I'm gonna leave it like that for now. That looks quite nice. Um, now I'm just gonna scale. In fact, no, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna make a null, uh, and I'm just gonna attach this to the null. Let's just name this um, inner twirl, and I'm just gonna scale this null down to maybe I don't know 75. There we go. And now we've got room for our outer ring. Um, so to make the ring, I used some stock footage, this uh, welding, these sparks, cool, hey? Um, and I'm gonna wrap them into a circle much like we did with the inner twirl 
uh, layer, um, and that's going to using the polar coordinates, and that's going to wrap a circle around our wormhole thing. So let's put that into a new composition. Um, let's make that two. Let's make that two thousand by two thousand, the same as the um, as our main comp. Um, and then we're going to call this. Let's just call this Sparks Ring. So. The way the polar coordinates works is it wraps it around from the bottom. So I'm sorry, auto save. Uh, so I'm going to put this down the bottom, scale it up some, stick it, I don't know, there ish, scale it up a bit more. And we'll just go back in. Let's just bring that in now and just start having a play and see how that looks. Um, we're just going to actually, you know what I'm going to quickly do? Is I'm going to stick, actually, no, I'll put it on this one. I'm going to stick an, something called an unmolt, okay? And unmolt, if you don't know it, it basically is it's a plugin that comes with, um, I believe it comes with the trap code suite, so like particular and form and all those things. Um, and it is, I think you can download it for free though, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it basically removes black from a layer. So right now, let's stick on the polar coordinates. We're going to copy and paste it from our 12 layer. And boom, we've got a ring. Although it's not joining up here, which kind of looks kind of looks cool for something, but um, not for a wormhole. Um, we're also gonna just while we're here, we're gonna get up the time remap. By the way, that is Command Alt and T, and that brings up the com um, time remap. And what we're gonna do is go to the out point of that. Um, and actually, it's not the last keyframe. This is the weird thing with Artex. It's not that keyframe because that's off. That turns it off. You know, you can bring that up and it's still off. So you need to go like the keyframe before, never really understood that, um, delete that keyframe. And then what we want to do is add a um, expression to this that will loop the time. So basically it'll just keep cycling round and round and round. Here we go, if we go into uh, this drop down menu property, we can go to loop out cycle and that will just repeat. If I just solo that, you can see, and it'll just loop it there and, and oh, God, my computer is so slow. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but look, you get the idea. It just loops and loops forever. Uh, so look, let's go back into our sparks and try and make this look a little bit better. We can stretch it out. That'll help a bit. A bit more uniform in terms of brightness across. But I think, you know, if we just have a quick look at that. See, that's already helping. We see it already helping there. But what we really want to do is flip this around um, or just rotate it 180. That's fine. Um, I'm going to screen that over. And then just line it up. And then when we go back in here, there we go, pretty good. Let's put it down a little bit. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, might be a little bit thick at the moment. So let's just, if we just make, actually, let's just make a little null. Stick that down here. I love nulls. I love a null. And we're going to scale that down just so they scale together. I mean, we could. There's other ways of doing that, but look, we've done it that way. That's the way we're doing it. There we go. It's a bit nicer, a bit, a bit finer. Um, and I'm just going to scale this. Actually, no, let's just scale that, that down a little bit. Just so it fits our wormhole a bit better. And then I'm also going to attach that to that null. And let's just call that <clears throat> control. Uh, and that's what we're going to use to scale the whole thing if we need to scale it. Um, so that's that's our basic wormhole. I'm going to add one more little sort of detail, um, which is which we're going to do in, in here. I'm going to call this particles because, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to add some particles. I'm going to use particular. Um, you could possibly use the inbuilt one, but particular is just way more versatile. So at the moment, it's just going to emit particles right in the center. What we need to do, what I want to do, is make a ring around um, just to give an extra detail of particles going around our wormhole. So in order to do that, we'll create a new null. Uh, let's call this rotate control, uh, rotate particles, actually. And then we're going to, let's make that 3D, and then we're going to make a light and we're going to call that light we're going to call it motion path one we're going to center that thousand by thousand 
there we go we can see that now um right now on that particles layer that we created that uh, solid um we're gonna oh we've put our particles effect on we don't need to do that again let's go into emitter we're gonna choose a sphere emitter because we want to kind of give it some width uh, we don't just want it to be a single line of particles and then we're going to go into physics and under air under the air module you can select here in motion path you can select a motion path and basically that will look into into here and what I've done actually I've, I've named this slightly wrong it needs to have a space there between motion path but yeah what it does is it will look into here and look for lights with um, named motion path correctly named motion path and then it will look for the number next to it and of course I put one so there we go one um, now at the moment obviously this right in the center what we need to do is offset it so let's offset it to there roughly for now roughly the oh no it's a bit further let's go to the edge of our wormhole okay cool and we're gonna we've we're gonna parent it to our rotate particles null and then we are gonna put an expression on the z rotation of the uh, particles rotation whatever null um, and we're gonna do time times uh, let's go 500 and what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a ring because it's basically well, let's just play it with um, so you can actually see the thing whizzing around so you see it's whizzing around there, that's the light, because it's attached to this null, which is spinning around. The only thing is it's offset. Now that's because at the beginning of your particular layer, that um, first position needs to be the same as the beginning position of your motion path. So we need to go to the first frame of here, and we need to get the position of here, 78800, so 788 on the X, zero on the Y, but it's still offset and you're probably wondering, well, why is that? Well, when you parent a layer to another layer in After Effects, it takes on the local position of the parent layer. So it basically zeroes out the X, Y, and Z, which means that where it says that it is, isn't really where it is in global space. It's just the kind of local space relative to the parent layer. It's probably a better way of explaining that, but all it really means is that we need to take the value of where the light is before it's parented to the null. And then we use that to tell particular where it needs to start its motion path. So let's say 1700, let's do 1700 because that's an easy number to put in because you've got two zeros. Um, and then it's uh, 1000 on the Y. And then let's, re let's just reparent that so we get our rotation again. And hopefully, there we go, we've got a ring. Now, we need to make this look less rubbish. And uh, we're gonna add some uh, motion blur to start with. Um, they're a little bit small, so we're just gonna make those particles a bit bigger so you can see them. Um, especially on this recording, it'll probably be invisible, I suspect. There you go, hopefully you can see them a bit better now. Um, and we are going to just mess with the size a little bit, maybe just randomize them a little bit, 30%. Uh, and the life, we don't need to be that long, probably a second maybe, because all we need to do is rotate once. Yeah, I mean, that's that's fine. We could probably have it even a little bit less. Um, let's do 0.8. Yeah, that's fine. I'm happy with that. And then we could um, we could randomize the life a little bit, maybe just like 20% just so it's not completely linear. That's fine, and let's up our particle count. Let's maybe go to a thousand. Let's see how that looks. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool, but it's a bit thick. So let's have, just have a look at it over the top. Yeah, it's a little bit thick. So um, let's reduce the emitter size. Let's maybe go 200. Cool, I think that's looking better. Let's just turn that off and on. Now they're looking a bit gross at the moment. So we're just gonna change the color of them. Let's make them more yellowy orange, maybe something like that. And then we're gonna hit okay. And we are gonna zoom along a little bit. And then we're gonna put some glow on them. Let's crank it up. Whoa, that is glowy. 
Let's change that color a little bit. It's a little bit yellow. Let's bring in maybe a little bit more white. That's kind of a bit, bit nicer. Maybe just, I'm just going to add a little bit of, there's a little bit of velocity on them, but I'm going to add a little bit more just so they kind of fling out a little bit more and a little bit slightly more random. But then we're going to bring in the size of the emitter a bit. Actually, no, too much of velocity. Let's go 150. Let's try that. And then add that over. And then maybe make the size a bit smaller. Okay, so now we've got some sort of extra detail in with these uh, extra particles, which I'm liking. Um, you know, you could still keep working with them, uh, but for the sake of this tutorial, I think I think we're good. One last thing I'm going to do is uh, this feels a little bit dark inside of here, so I'm just going to make another um, solid. I'm going to put it right to the bottom. I'm going to stick a ramp on there, gradient ramp, and we're going to put that to radial. I'm going to set the uh, middle of the black is straight and dead center in the middle. Let's just solo that so we can see it. Uh, I'm going to actually swap the colors and I'm going to change that white to a nice bluey green. Maybe just crank some curves on there just to give it a nice sort of hot spot. Oh, there we go. And then I'm going to screen this inner twirl over the top and it just gives us something actually I wonder if we should swap those colors maybe we should swap them I don't know let's leave it like that um, we're gonna need to put a um, mask on there so just double click on the um, circular mask layer and then we're gonna bring that in to about there and we're gonna just feather feather that out some just so there's no hard lines in there. Now the last thing, now talking about hard lines, the last thing there is to do is just fix this horrible line up here where um, where the uh, polar coordinates meet. Um, so let's just make a new adjustment layer. Actually, that's a normal layer. I mean, you can use a normal layer and just, but let, let's just do an adjustment. Layer. Let's do it properly, Jesus. Stick it above the sparks layer. because We don't need it above the particles layer because the particles layer is fine. And we're just going to add a directional blur. And we set it to 90 degrees because we want it to be going across, blowing that way, kind of roughly with the um, with the actual wormhole. And then we're just going to put, obviously that's doing it to the whole lot, so we're just going to put a little mask just on that area and we'll put a little feather on that too. Okay, cool. And that's kind of just, just you can see pretty much fixed that's kind of nice we can we can deal with that now let's go back into our main shot let's bring it in have a look let's stick it on a 3d layer um, let's take our positional let's take all, all our rotation as well because I just and stick it in there it's really big at the moment so maybe 20 smaller 10 yeah 10 10 is pretty cool and then let's have a look. Okay, so there we go. It's kind of in. We're looking okay. Obviously, the grade is way off because we've got, you know, the ungraded footage and this is obviously really saturated. So maybe let's just quickly put a um, rough grade on here. Just stick some curves on just so we can kind of start to get a feel of how, you know, the end, end result might look. Um, and we'll stick some saturation on there as well. Warm it up a bit. Cool. And then we're gonna we've got a lot of movement in this shot, so let's put some motion blur on there. That's cool. Um, and actually, the wormhole's looking a bit too saturated still, so we're just gonna bring that down a bit and maybe bring the lightness up a little bit. And that's starting to blend a bit more. We're just gonna add some glow quickly. Uh, this is pretty. Now maybe we can uh, 
Maybe we can bring down the lightness now. Actually, now we've got the glow on. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of better. Um, maybe just yeah, something like that looks cool. And um, but of course, yeah, this is really luminous. It's going to be giving out lots of light. So we actually need some light spill on the ground as well. So we can actually take our um, null, uh, sorry, our solid that we created earlier. I'm just going to duplicate that just so we've still got the original. Um, and then we're going to rotate it down onto the floor. Um, and to do that, I want to change my anchor point to the bottom. Now you could grab the anchor point. Oop, sorry. And uh, yeah, drag it to the bottom about there. Or there's another cool plugin um, called Motion, which you can get from A Scripts, I believe. Um, and on there, there's like a cool little thing here, like a D-pad, uh, which you can just change the anchor point to um, various places. Uh, so yeah, there we go. We can change it straight to the bottom like that. And then we can rotate it um, on the X. Oh, not that one. Um, let's just do it with our controller. Controller, mouse. The controller is the mouse. And then we're just gonna push it back a little bit in Z. Actually, let's let's um let's just put the anchor point back in the middle and then we're gonna scale it up. Actually scale up real big, real big. And we're gonna bring it forward a bit in Z so it's not against that back wall. And then we're gonna put a big old circle on there. Double click on the mask tool again, and we're going to get those controls up the mask tool. Double click on the M. Oh, where's it gone? Ah, now I forgot. Um, right. The reason that's disappeared is because this solid that we created in the in the, at the beginning is absolutely tiny. So actually, what we need to do is make it look 20 by 20. We need to make it much bigger. So let's make it like 2,000 by 2,000, and then obviously it's going to be huge. So we should scale it back down again, like 20. There we go. So let's get up our mask options again. We're gonna we're gonna actually decrease the size of the expansion. So then when we feather it out, it doesn't go all over. It doesn't go past the edges. So that's kind of maybe a little bit more. Something like that. Maybe push it back again in space. So it's just underneath the wormhole. And then green, well green isn't really doing it for me. So uh, let's stick a fill on there and let's just grab a color from there, maybe like, yeah, the blue. And then let's add it over the top. And look at that, we've got some lovely light spill. Uh, and just take down the opacity a bit, it's a bit bright, maybe a bit more. Don't want too much, it's just, it's you know, it's a relatively subtle effect, but um, and now what you might notice is just in the middle there, we've got where the, the wormholes intersecting with the ground with this glow that we've just done. Um, we just need to uh, separate those. Now, you know, you could just bring it down. That's one way. But the thing is an easier way, I think, is you just, if you put in a 2D layer, so like a null object or an adjustment layer in between the ground floor, uh, in between the layers that you want to separate, and um, like this, bump, and it's gone. The uh, well, I mean, it just it stops them from intersecting, basically. So that's cool. Um, let's put on motion blur for that as well. And what next? Well, actually, in the final in the final shot, I had these bits of electricity shooting off, um, as you can see there. So we can do those next. So we're going to make a couple of solids. Well, make one solid. Um, and actually, we want that to be the comp size. We don't need any bigger than that. Um, and then we're going to stick a lightning, advanced lightning, not just normal lightning. There we go, advanced lightning. And we are going to make that a 3D layer. And we're going to put it back where that wormhole is. Let's just stick that on add because we want to make it look nice and, and bright and stuff. And we're just going to like stick a point in here and a point in there. Actually, let's scale this up a bit more. And then we're just going to have to move move these points again. And all we would want to do is just create these little flashes of lightning as if they're sort of arcing onto... Oh, we need to change this, by the way. We need to change this to strike. There we go. 
It's just as if they're kind of coming off the wormhole and hitting some of the ceiling or the floor or whatever. So um, let's put one there. Let's change the color because uh, let's just put a hue on there and we'll change it to more like a bluey, yeah, somewhere like there. Um, and we just want a flash of it. So we're just gonna hit Alt and uh, begin bracket, I think, is that right? Apprentices, whatever you call it. Um, and then that's just gonna have one flash up there. We wanna change the, so it kind of looks like it's, you know, uh, moving. We can change the conductive state. See like that? It sort of makes it look like it's moving. So we can um, we can just put like a quick uh, expression on that, just to say time times I don't know fifty, and then basically as you're going through that will actually animate. And we just need to do a bunch of those. Okay, so. Uh, here we go, we got some lightning or electricity striking off it. Next thing actually is, the, and I think it's the last last little touch for this shot, and it's just to add some heat distortion. So imagine this thing is kind of emitting radiation. We wanna add some of that stuff to the shot so it's distorting the background. Um, and to do that, I use, uh, if we create a new new adjustment layer, and to do that, I use a plugin again from Video Copilot. I mean, man, that guy should be paying me a million. And it's called Heat Distortion. I'm just gonna type that in there, Heat Distortion on this adjustment layer. And then we're gonna search for it here. Heat, oh, there we go, Heat Distortion. And, um, and as you can see, it kind of completely distorts, but it, it, it's really, it's not just like turbulent displacement, it adds these really nice little bits of blur in there as well. But obviously we don't want it across the whole frame, so we're gonna make a, just a mask, circular mask, we're gonna bring it out. We're gonna just do this in 2D, we're not gonna stick it into 3D space. Um, and we're just gonna do a really quick, uh, rough, dirty um, little track. So let's, let's stick it beneath the wormhole, because we just want it to be affecting the um, footage behind it. Uh, and bring up the uh, mask controls. We're gonna stick a keyframe on the on the mask path. I'm just gonna go back 10 frames. I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna go back a few more frames. And we're gonna move it. And then we're gonna go back a few more frames. I mean, you know, you, you've moved a mask before. You know how it works. Well, have you? I don't know. If this is your first tutorial, well, hi, good on you, welcome. I hope I haven't spoiled After Effects for you. Uh, here we go, and we're kind of at the end. So there we go. That's roughly what we want. Um, and you see, it's you know, it's kind of subtle, but it's just it just adds that extra loveliness. So you know we could we could play with those settings a bit um, and try and maybe you know maybe reduce the scale, um, and you know you could keep playing with that. You could you could play with that all day, all day. The only thing is um, I'm getting a little bit of um, where the mask is just going over the corner of the screen. You see here, just getting this funny little edge here. Um, so to to eliminate that, I'm just gonna, you know what, I don't actually know this for sure, but I'm gonna try putting a grow bounds on, see. Oh, there we go, look at that. The grow bounds sorts that out. Now that's RGS, so um, that's not the inbuilt one. Let's just try the inbuilt one and just see if that works. For some reason the RGS one seems to work a lot better. And then let's just increase this. You see, it's not working. I don't know what I don't know what RGS is doing differently. It's Red Giant one. Anyway, but it, that, that fixes it. Um, cool, and that's about it. We can uh, go ahead and stick, stick a filmic letterbox on there. Maybe not 4.3, maybe change it to 2.3.5. Look at that, look how cool that's looking. And um, we have a wormhole. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments below if you did. Um, I know it's really different from my usual stuff, but then maybe a lot of the people that watch my normal stuff won't be watching this video anyway, so maybe it doesn't matter. I don't know. It's a bit of an experiment, but we'll see how it works out.
Um, see you in the next episode. Take care of yourselves. Thank you.